wanted to do this episode uh, to talk about the way that femme, sexual, femme identity intersects and does not intersect with sexuality and sexual practice. Uh, first, I want to start with a quote. Uh, Tara Hardy in the anthology Visible, a femtology, says that fucking is indeed the femiest of fem hobbies. Uh, I thought that that was a very interesting kind of lead-in to a, an essay, particularly when fems are thought about as particular ways as stereotype follows. Um, this misunderstanding is exacerbated by concepts of masculinity and femininity, which feature within our queer lexicons, uh, often in the form of the terms butch, uh, femigress, ag, stud, etc., ones that construct fem identity in negative relation and opposition to other identities, instead of uh, working towards a positive definition that says what fem is instead of what fem ain't. Um, fem day is specific to talking about the ways, as I've said before, that sex does and does not overlap with understanding of gender. As we talked about before in our last episode, topping and bottoming, um, <laughs> femme identity does not have a direct correlation with any sexual practice or sexual roles. Be this as it may, there are many assumptions about how femmes have sex and with whom. Uh, it is a common and outdated stereotype that femmes are only bottoms. Um, femmes are assumed to be the receptive partner during penetrative sex, even when this not, is not the case. Variation in sex roles for femmes often ends up being covered up as a result of this misunderstanding. Also, uh, I hope today that we'll talk a little bit about the ways that femme uh, gender and all, like all gender is influenced by ability, race, class, sexual history, and presentations, and our own gendered assumptions about what that means. So, now I'm going to open the floor for any questions and comments about where gendered ideas of femme sexuals and femme identity may come from. Uh, do you think that these are things that spring from our community or do you think that they spring from a more popular discourse of sexism in a larger American culture? I know for me personally, my femininity was like really informed by music videos. Um, and it's, you know, it's interesting because I didn't grow up watching a lot of TV. In fact, I like did grow up with the TV. The school that I went to didn't what was like kind of anti TV, so it's like once I hit, you know, whatever age, maybe you know, 11, 12, whatever, just like getting into music videos and seeing what was represented and like what I saw as like, like what bodies and what like presentations I saw being reinforced as sexy, you know, in terms of like responses around that. For a super long time, like I identified as butch, uh, not just a butch, but a stone butch top, um, and like because. That's so different where I am now. I feel like my femininity is like so intentional, uh, particularly in light of what it takes for me to be recognized like as like a taller, black, disabled woman. Uh, it, there, I feel like there has to be a little more, like I have to be very intentional about like the way that my femininity looks if I wanted to be recognized as such. You know, like I feel like if I was a jeans and t-shirt femme, like I would be perceived very differently than I am, particularly because of class. Like, I don't have the money to run out every time that I feel like my gender is changing a little bit to like go get clothes that are going to make, help me be more like readily recognized. And so like in that case, like I have to like be very specific with like what I purchase, how I adorn it, how I like decorate my body, you know, if I'm going to be accepted into a larger femme understanding. Like for me, femininity has always been super in terms of my understanding of what it means to be a femme person because I feel like growing up the only queer people I knew were like really granola like just like hippie-ish white lesbians who just like were like not necessarily butch but not necessarily femme either um and so I feel like in, in coming into like my feminist and like appreciating it as like a valid expression of my gender and my like sexuality I feel like I was very confused because I feel like white femininity was one thing and like black or brown or whatever femininity was, was very separate and that I couldn't have both of them be together without like either not being queer or not being like black and like I feel like that struggle even like as an adult or as a person coming into adulthood is still like so like going home and being queer 
and being queer and going home is like so crazy because when I came out to my mom, I think she was very confused because I was still feminine and all the black lesbians that we knew were like ultra masculine spectrum and like just like how did, how did it make sense that someone who could like be so incredibly feminine be so like queer? I feel like it's something that I still like struggle with in seeing my family, even those who aren't like in this country per se. femininity is so often conflated with being a woman that like femme identity mm -hmm. isn't necessarily explored in like a, a like a or isn't seen as a valid like gender queer identity um and like while i identify as a femme woman uh, i also think that woman can be a gender queer identity uh <laughs> i don't necessarily understand where like the net like the necessity of like separation of that comes from but i, I feel like it could also be a holdover of like the post second wave feminist like moment where you know you're coming out of this place where like everyone is like striving to be completely androgynous and like femme and butch are like pushed completely to the back burner uh, because like they're assumed to be imitating heterosexual gender roles. But, like this idea of the fierce femme and like being fearless all the time and like not, which I feel like is a very like like just oh you're so fierce all the time and it's just like I feel like I get that a lot and that's just spectacular and I think I am really fierce but that doesn't mean that like I I also feel like that is a very like hyper hyperactive sort of thing that exists within queer communities especially like queer activist realms like having to always be this like force which is like true but not necessarily all that like you desire and need. Definitely and like even more than that like I think that like femme work, like the work that works that femmes do in communities are like consistent, are what our community like has grown on, like in a lot of ways, but are like so easily written off. You know, like we are often not recognized for the amount of work that we do in communities. And I think like that for me is the saddest part about being like a femme and being active and about and this notion of fierceness. Uh, like, what does it even fucking mean to be fierce? Like, no one has ever stopped and defined it. I feel like, I, I recently asked like a queer, like male-identified coworker of mine, like I was writing a bio or a description, and I'm like, okay, so I need three words that you think describe me. He's like, the only one I can think of is fierce. And I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? That is just big enough to work, my friend. <laughs> so, I think that like, it's just kind of the default word that people go to when they want to describe a femme. I don't know if it's because they like alliterations. I don't know <laughs> uh, if, if they're like trying to like say it as like fearlessness. I, I have no clue what they mean when they say fears. It just, to the point where it's now, it's just become like a buzzword, you know? Uh, the Fem Shark Manifesto says, you know, we're only invisible if we don't know how to look for us, um, which I think is an important kind of idea. Uh, especially in light of the fact that femininity and like femme identity is created in neg negative relation to almost all other genders, particularly masculinity and super particularly butch identity. Um, like most often when you hear the word femme, it's butch and femme, you know? Uh, and rarely is it femme and butch. But um, I think that this is, to me, I think this is largely because of the lack of a working definition that our community has for femme. Uh, which I see as maybe a source of the problem. Uh, and also, lesbian, le lesbians and queer women resist defining them, which is good, but then it's left to be defined by media outlets and colloquial dialogues. So what do we think about like defining them? Is it better to give a working definition of them, or is it better to just leave it undefined and like leave it up to like personal understandings of what that means? Or should there, should like our community be working towards like a, a definition of like them that is loose enough that it's not like created just to exclude others, but like it's also something that like we could use in order to like to build fem solidarity. For me, that's bringing up some personal stuff and thinking about like fem solidarity, not just across like queer communities, but also like communities where like femmes are engaged with like hetero bodied folks. Um, and like for myself as queer and femme identified, and you know dating somebody who's a trans dude, I still sleep with men, I still sleep with women, butches, thuds, femmes, like all of it, and I just don't really know how to differentiate, but I feel like my feminist 
um, becomes complicated by the fact that I do sleep with men. Um, and not that I do that all the time, but like, you know, have like throughout the course of my life. And um, so I don't know, I think that that just like in some ways complicates this conversation because, um, you know, one of the things that you had initiated, which didn't happen because, you know, at the time or place of people not showing up was, you know, this conversation about bi folk and I don't identify as bisexual and, you know, that's no disrespect to anybody who does. I personally think that bisexuality is like inherently transphobic, but, um, you know, I think just in terms of like folks who do sleep with like the whole spectrum of like men and women, just then this becomes complicated in a different way because, you know, maybe I'm recognized as a fierce femme, you know, in queer community, but then I, am I still, you know, recognized as a fierce femme if I'm out with the dude, you know, or if I'm like, oh, this is my trans partner, but like, yeah, I'm being home romance and I, you know, because whatever, whatever in our relationship, like how does that change things? So, um, you know, I don't know, I guess for me that doesn't necessarily call for a need to define femme, but I think, you know, just highlights again that like notions or like notions of femme really don't function when they're carved out in terms of like, you know, something as like in relation to like, because honestly, like how, how would somebody talk about my femme identity if I fuck everybody? You know, really like how, how is that talked about? So unless like I become like a visible active like unit being whatever, you know, then, then like, there isn't really, there isn't really space for them to apply to my body, you know, or my identity or like my actions. So, um, I think that you know, uh, that is like a very fluid category, very fluid category. And like I'm femme, but like damn, I don't look femme all the time. You know, I definitely don't. I mean, I'm sure everybody on this campus who knows me or has known me for some years has seen that my, you know, aesthetic, my presentation has changed a lot. And like that's just what you know what it is or how it's been. So. Um, but I, but I think I think that it's really important to um, you know again think about ways to actively carve out space for fans, but maybe not like defining that as like um, like a solid identity category because again that intersects in so many different ways. So it's difficult whenever people talk about definitions, you know, because like definitions do inherently exclude exclude, you know, because like when you create an in group, you have to create an out group. Like there's not another option. Um, and I also but I also think like it becomes difficult to organize around an identity that is completely undefined except for about what it's not. Yeah. Like for instance, I signed for a group on campus called the Vampire, um, <laughs> as did some other people in this room. <laughs> um, but the difficulty that we experienced, well, that I experienced within that group is that like no one necessarily identified as femme in the group. It was just kind of like a catch-all for femininity or just gays. It was just like the catch-all gay group. Um, which is okay, so but like, fitted clothes. yeah, exactly. People, people whose clothes touch their bodies, <laughs> you know. And I, I think that that does a disservice to femmes that we can never have like a place where it's like, no, like we're here because we identify as femme. Uh, I don't think that it needs to be like a super like. And on Mondays, femmes only wear lipstick, and you know, like you must wear a skirt four times a week. No sweatpants except for on Fridays, like Mean Girls. And pink on you know, Wednesdays. So. <laughs> pink on Wednesdays. Exactly, and pink on Wednesdays. You know, like, I don't think that it needs to be that specific, but I do think that it, like, it should at least be, like, understanding that there is a difference between sexuality, sex, and gender, and that, like, femme is a gender. You know, it's, like, a gender that, like, is as complicated and, like, confusing and fluid as everyone else's gender, you know, and, like, is no more oppressive than anyone else's gender, you know? Like, it's not a value-neutral judgment that people make when they're talking about them. you know? Like, it's very value-laden. Like, but I think something that you said, which is so radical, is that, like, femme is a gender. Like, I've never heard that before, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that, like, if there was, um, you know, more sense of them as a gender, that might be another way to kind of, like, localize and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know. I just never heard that before, but... That seems to work in my mind right now. <laughs>